Welcome to the Cups of Consciousness show. I am Alea Dow, your host. I'm a doctor of oriental medicine, a sound healer, the author and founder of the Seven Cups of Consciousness. I have produced nine sound healing albums and have recorded over 2,000 meditations online. I am an energy practitioner and help people shift their consciousness using their energetic fields. And this show is all about using your energetic fields to shift your consciousness as well as exploring energetic concepts that help you create a more empowered and connected life. This episode is an energetic session that explores concepts, energetic practices, and protocols that are similar to a prayer, which help you transform particular aspects of your life. When you listen, recognize that some part of you is using your energetic fields to shift your vibration, which in turn shifts your consciousness, your behaviors, your beliefs, how you react and respond. You might even go into an altered state, so use caution if you're driving or doing something that requires a focused mind. With all of this work that I present, remember that it is your energy shifting you in your own unique way. That way you stay in control and empower with your process. So take a deep breath in. Pull yourself into your line of light and explore your inner terrain in a safe and supported space. Let's dive in. Welcome to the Seven Cups of Consciousness podcast with me, Alea, and today I am interviewing Michelle. Michelle is a practitioner on the Seven Cups site, and it is an incredible honor to have you with us today, Michelle. Thank you. It's such an honor to be here with you and to be um, in the world of your podcast listeners. Thank you. And let's start by having you share with our audience a little bit of your backstory, kind of what brought you to become a Seven Cups of Consciousness practitioner. So I've been on my spiritual path since I can remember. I can remember as a kid thinking things that other people were not really thinking or talking about, I would mention them and they're like, what is that? And, and I found also that a lot of my friends would come to me for advice, support. Um, They felt very safe to tell me their story and something that was going on with them or bothering them. And I've had several people let me know, wow, I didn't think that you would not share that or, and I'm so thankful that you were really that safe space that I could come to. And that's always really touched my heart. um, Because of course, I would not share somebody else's story that I didn't want that. Um, So I found on my path, um, the desire to continue to learn and grow. And I was always really interested in coming to a full place of self-love. And I did work um, here with this person and I did work there with that person. And I did my own internal work and really everything that I could glean from things that I learned or from other people in their teachings to really focus on getting to that place of self-love. And I worked and I worked and I tried and I tried. And I actually had a um, an epiphany or an awakening with something that was very, um, very much a, a shock and a struggle that came into my life. And I woke up thinking, now I really value myself. This is what that feels like. And you had already been in my awareness when that came in, but I had not yet started working with you. And soon after that, though, I think less than a month, I had my first one-on-one session with you and had started listening to the dailies and tall cups before that. And I really found the distillation of the information you provided to be so supportive, so gentle, so healing, so loving, 
and gave me practical tools of how to cultivate that awakening that I had. So I came to that, like, I'm going to, like, this is really now where I delineate having learned to love myself. But that was almost a, a launching point to move forward into really integrating that. And that's where the work with you have really supported that process in learning the tools of how to cultivate that self-love even deeper, even more, coming more into my authenticity and to live a life where I am thriving. Beautiful. There's still struggles. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> always, 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 right? <laughs> but it's more how we how we react and respond to those struggles. Is it from a place of grace or is it from a place of struggle when we get the struggle? Exactly. Yeah. And I've learned to do it with much more grace. Uh, and I'm so grateful to have learned um, the easy, practical ways to do that. And as you've been practicing these, my sense is that your space that you hold with people has always been safe, but is now even safer. It's a much thicker, richer, bigger safe container that then allows people to drop even more deeply. And I think the biggest piece with healing is having a really safe space. If we don't have that safe space, we will not open, we will not reveal will fear going into shame or being shamed, being judged. And the container that you hold is profoundly safe for people. And I think that that is one of your many gifts, but one of the greatest. Thank you. Yeah. It's one of the ones that I just am so grateful for and in awe for within myself to witness, um, get, because I'm a practitioner to witness my clients really go deep into um, that healing space Beautiful. and to release what they're ready to release and to receive what they're ready to receive in a real beautiful, profound way. And with that, with the seven cups training prior to being a seven cups of pra seven cups of consciousness practitioner, you also trained in Ayurvedic astrology or Ayurveda medicine, Ayurvedic medicine. Can you tell the audience a little bit more about your, your background of other trainings that you've done? Yes. So I am, um, a, what they call a clinical Ayurvedic specialist, um, meaning that I've had many, many years of training and schooling, and I work with many clients that have, um, really layered and deep, um, places to on what I call unwind in their health. And in Ayurveda, we understand that health is not just physical, it's mental, emotional, and energetic and spiritual. And it's a big piece of coming back to balance, coming back to health. And so I've been really fortunate to be able to expand that energetic spiritual aspect to my Ayurvedic work so that it is even more rounded. And of course, they still work with the physical and there's the mental and emotional always. Um, but to understand that really in healing, from my perspective, we're always trying to get to that root cause. And really what's that the deepest layer and to begin to support in that area. And there are going to be layers. There's all so many layers often, but to begin to work in that rooted layered place of the foundation of why someone is in a state of imbalance or what we often say within uh, your world, which I love, which is in a discordant way of being whether that's physically, mentally, emotionally, or spiritually, energetically, and to bring more harmony in. Beautiful. And how is it that you weave the seven cups, concepts, practices, protocols into Ayurvedic, your, into, into your Ayurvedic practice? Yes. So I... And or do you? I do. I do with almost every <laughs> client that I have. And it's... 
you know, each session with each client is unique. And when someone sits down in front of me, I open up to where they are and I invite them to share with what's going on for them. And then I begin to address what's the most prominent thing that's coming up for them. And a lot of times it's really in this energetic place. So I'll begin to talk about that with them and their energetic fields and that, you know, what they are experiencing could be empathic, which may not even be their own. And that's a lot. I think I, so many people uh, come to me who are highly empathic. And so I will speak to that place of where they are uh, pretty much experiencing probably a big majority of other people's thoughts, behaviors, emotions, ways of being that are causing them that disharmonic way of being. And so how to really begin to shift that process for them. And then once they have come to a place where they recognize that's maybe not empathic anymore than how to really go into that deep layered space within themselves. And Ayurveda is, you know, the science of life and it encompasses everything. So it's not just our own physical health, but also the health of our relationships, the health with our community. And I find that a lot of the work that I've been able to do with my clients is really to support their relationships with themselves, of course, first and foremost, but also with their loved ones, their children, their partners, their parents, their siblings, their friends, and to provide a different perspective in shifting how they interact with them and not to get so triggered, or if they do get triggered, what to do with it and how to really show up in a way that's um, supportive for that other person that's not going to impact them as they might have been in the past. Beautiful. Very powerful and profound. In your journey, when you started using the seven cups, what is the concept that you first resonated with very deeply? And how has that changed in terms of what you resonate with really deeply now? Beautiful question. So I think the concept that resonated with me the most, and it still may be that, but I'll contemplate that more, is the inner world. And recognizing that that's what we can shift and change. That's what we have control of. And to begin to learn concepts, tools, behaviors of things we can easily integrate to shift that inner world. And that was really what was biggest for me when I began to work with the tools. And I think that still is, but the what's coming also is the work with body deva. That's, I think, what's really been first and foremost with myself more recently, because it's such a different process to think about our bodies as truly separate beings. And we've heard that we kind of know, yes, we're a a soul riding in a physical form or that we are a spiritual being having a human experience, but that to really understand that body Deva is her own being on her own trajectory of growth and evolution, and that we can be a support in that process has really been profound for me and uh, supporting shifts and changes that I would not have thought possible because as a soul and trying to control body, that didn't work very well. And so to be able to really support her and to be in her own empowerment and to shift and change herself without feeling guilt or shame or whatever might come up in relation to that process has been uh, beautiful. Wonderful. And with that kind of segueing, 
were, we just experienced spring equinox yesterday. Yeah. And we have this new cycle that begins this new seasonal year in your practice right now, working with people in person and also virtually, what is your focal point that you're really honing in on or how are you working with people this month to support them in this new cycle that sets the tone for this coming year? So it's the answer really is kind of a combination of the work, of course, that I do with you and Ayurveda. And that in Ayurvedic medicine, we understand the importance of cleansing as well as nourishing. And twice a year in spring and in fall, Ayurveda really supports that cleansing process. And so I've really been working with people to be on uh, that path with themselves in whatever way that looks like for them. I also support others in group cleanses. I'm uh, in Ayurveda, what's called a Panchakarma specialist. So I can go deep into that cleansing process. And of course, within that cleansing support that I provide, whether it's individual or in a group, I'm interweaving the ways to cleanse your energetic fields. And to really bring in that process for soul and for body. Wow. And in a different way for both, or could be similar, but really supporting that deep cleansing to let go of what's ready to shed so that you can show up in spring and summer and the rest of the year and your life in a different way of being that supports you in that that deeper place where you can be really authentic with yourself and others, which I think that cleansing process does. Excellent. And with that, I know that you do your own cleanse and then you're witnessing your clients go through the process. Is there a story that you have of somebody going through this process or even yourself that created a pretty major shift? Mm. Well, I have found that a lot of people, when they've come to me wanting to cleanse, are thinking that they really want to focus on the body. And what I found is that not everyone was ready to do that deep cleanse physically. And so we began the process with cleansing energetic fields and that helped them to feel that lightness that they were wanting and thinking they needed to do in a deeper way with the body. Now, of course, the body, there's deepness in the soul, there's deepness, energetic fields, but it's, there's a, an easier process with the tools that you have distilled and brought to us so beautifully that can shift someone's energy in an, in an easier way than thinking that you have to go days and days eating differently or days and days of doing some sort of fasting, which they may not be physically in the place that they can do it. Right. That would be helpful for them. So, so to it, begin with the energy is supportive. And I wonder too, if people have had a really hard time cleansing in the past or giving something up, cleansing the energetic fields of the soul, of the body, does that then make it easier to actually engage in a physical cleanse? I think so, because you're not coming up against what's in your energetic fields to try to shift that just in the physical, because when we shift things energetically first, it makes it so much easier to shift our emotions, our mind, our thought forms, and our body. Yeah. So it makes it so much easier to cleanse the energetic fields first. So in addition to taking people through cleanses, if you were to kind of feel into your absolute passion zone, your mastery, what zone do you feel like you love working in with people? 
Well, I'd have to say that the ultimate is the place of someone coming to that self-love realization. And to me that, you know, like self-love, sure. But I think that when we have that deep sense of who we are and what is ours and what we can shift and what we can give back to someone else that's not ours, that we come to that place of authenticity and really showing up in a way that is more of who we are. And that's what I think that self-love really is, Mm -hmm. is coming to that place of who we really are without everything else that we've been bombarded with, that we've been holding, that we've thought has been ours and been trying to work with it. So from my perspective, I think that's my deepest place of coming to an awareness and a practice where you can easily shift your vibration And to come into that inner world, to cultivate that inner world in such a way that you're living this authentic, confident life that's leading you in the direction of doing the work that you desire and how you want to show up in the world and perhaps even serve. Even if it's just your family or your community, or if it's your work, but I think that's really what, um, like is my deepest desire and focus of supporting someone to come to beautiful, helping them get deeply connected and with their essence. And then also in that they, I have noticed that when they get, when they work with you, they get deeply connected with their essence and then they're actually able to express themselves, their creative energy with this incredible clarity and that confidence. And just to complete, I I have loved our time and I'm like, oh my gosh, we have to wrap up. Um, The last question that I would love to have you share with our audience, but again, only if it's comfortable, is what is something that no one knows about you that you would feel comfortable sharing with our audience today? Well, I'm not sure that it's no one knows, but very few people perhaps know that I had the deep um, gift to be able to go in to Tibet and witness these people that are living in a lot of purity. Now, of course, they've been um, subjected to that, which is not that, but they still hold it because it's deep within their core. And to witness this light that comes from their soul, that they shine to the world, that maybe not everybody gets to see anymore, but to witness that was just an immense gift. And I actually was very fortunate as well to do the Kora around Mount Kailash. And that just brought such a a deep connection to myself and um, releasing that which was not my own, but to really, again, probably more profoundly is that witnessing those beautiful beings that I could see have so much purity in them. How incredible. What a beautiful experience. It was a lifetime, a once in a lifetime. <laughs> wow. Wow. How incredible. Well, thank you so much for sharing your stories, your gifts, your wisdom, your mastery, holding that as you walk in the world. And I would love all of our listeners to know that they are more than welcome to connect with you to experience a free intro session to work with you more deeply and feel free to go to the link below that we'll share of how to book a free intro session with Michelle. Michelle, is there anything else that you would like to share with our audience before we complete? Well, just that I'm in deep gratitude for all the work that you have brought into the world. 
were so gracious. <laughs> and well, it's so true because you really took a lot of time and energy to distill these concepts that are universal. They're not new, but you put them into a different perspective in a different light that really provides clarity and understanding. And it's just a beautiful, um, it's a beautiful tool set to really shift yourself in order to live the life that you choose. So thank you very much, Alea. Thank you, Michelle. Thank you for joining us, everyone, today. And have a beautiful day. Hold your light, love your essence, and model that as you move in the world. Thank you. Oh. Thank you. Oh. You have been listening to the Cups of Consciousness show with me, Alea Dow. Receive a free month of the Cups of Consciousness. Go to sevencupsofconsciousness.com. When you get your free month, you will get five cups a week for four weeks. You'll also receive access to a live tall cup of consciousness session. Feel free to review the show. Thank you so much for listening, and we'll see you next time. Aho.